Welcome to the Elements of Science. My name is Abigail from Research and Knowledge Exchange at the Mind Foundation. Today's topic is p-values and statistical significance. So let's say you're reading a scientific paper and you come across something like this. p is less than 0 0.05. And that's left you wondering, what is a p-value? Well, the p stands for probability. Basically, it gives you information about whether the result found in the study is likely to also be found in real life. But it's a bit more complicated than that. Let's say I'm a scientist and I think caffeine makes people hungrier, and I want to test that in a study. So I bring people into my lab, and I give half of them a big dose of caffeine, and the other half an inactive placebo. Then I give them each a bunch of snacks, and I see which group eats more food. I observe that on average, the caffeinated group ate 14 snacks each, and the placebo group ate 10. And now, I want to know if this difference in my data reflects a real difference in the world outside of my lab. So to find out, I have to calculate the p-value based on my data. And this part is really essential. Before calculating, scientists always assume that they are wrong and that there is no difference between the groups. This is called assuming the null hypothesis. So I assume that I'm wrong and that caffeine has no effect on hunger. And with that assumption, I calculate the p-value. And let's say I get 0.81. So that p-value is the probability of seeing this difference between groups, assuming that caffeine does not affect hunger. So a p of 0.81 means that even if caffeine has no effect on hunger in the real world, there's an 81% chance that I could still find this difference in my data anyway. So even though I see a difference in my data, the p-value says it's not enough evidence that caffeine affects hunger. It's a different story if I get a really low p-value, let's say 0 0.001. Then there's only a 0.1% chance that I would see this difference in my data if the null hypothesis is true and caffeine does not affect hunger. So this p-value says there's strong evidence that I can reject the null hypothesis and claim that there's evidence that caffeine makes people hungrier. Conventionally, scientists say that a p of under 0 0.05 is good evidence that the null hypothesis isn't true. We call that statistically significant. Some are more conservative and use 0 0.01 as the significance threshold. But either way, the lower the p-value, the stronger the evidence against the null hypothesis. One last thing. P-values are easily misunderstood. So firstly, although very small p-values tell you that a difference is probably there, it doesn't tell you how big or meaningful the difference is. Secondly, the p-value doesn't tell you the chance that the null hypothesis is true or that any other hypothesis is true. Instead, it tells you the chance of getting the result you saw, or a more extreme one, if the null hypothesis is true. So in our example, p was the probability that we would get the group differences we saw, assuming that caffeine doesn't actually affect hunger. In a scientific study, that would probably be interpreted as evidence in favor of the theory that caffeine affects hunger. So. Now you've learned all about p-values. According to my calculations, there is strong evidence against the hypothesis that they will confuse you in the future. See you next time on Elements of Science.